Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and today we're going to be wiping the grin off someone's face. Footage today is provided by Pond5, so go check out all their vast array of footage at pond5.com. So in this shot we have the classic pan across to a confident guy beaming at you in the car mirror. The shot is all fine and good, but as soon as we get to the end, his smile goes from confident to a little bit unsure and a bit too wide, so our hypothetical agency wants to do a reshoot. But as we have Mocha, rather than edit down the clip or reshoot, what we can do is grab the smile we do like and use it across to the end of the shot while maintaining the rest of the actor's performance. So let's jump in and see how we can do this with Mocha and After Effects. So we could do this with the Mocha Bro standalone, but because I'm inside After Effects today, I'm just going to select my layer, go up to Effect, and choose Mocha by Imagineer Systems and Mocha Pro. And then we can just click the large Mocha button at the top to launch our Mocha interface. So the first thing we're going to do is look across our timeline to work out exactly where the smile is that we want to use. So I'm going to scan through here, and about here where his smile spreads, we want to actually stop it about the time his teeth are exposed, so around 185. So I'm going to start by drawing a shape at the end of my shot, where his smile's the biggest, and track the entirety of his face. The reason we're going to draw a shape the size of his face is we want to catch the entire motion of his face, not just his smile. So here we're focused on tracking the glasses area to keep it nice and static and the nose, and we're also going to be tracking the stretchy area around where his mouth moves. So turning on the surface and grid, and keeping it to sheer, we can start tracking backwards from the end point. And this is going to go through the shot, and we're just going to watch until his mouth closes where we want that smile to be. So in the middle here, we're just watching how it moves across the shot, and when he closes his mouth, we can stop tracking. So as you can see here, we've now got the overall motion of the face. You can see that it's locked onto the motion of his head and the camera pan, but we're not getting too much stretch around the face area where the smile is. I'm going to stop it here at the point where he just closes his mouth, and I'm just going to narrow it down to about where I want that smile to sit, just before his lips part. Once we've found that spot, we can go over to the layer controls here and just set the layer in point to where that smile sits. So now we need to create the frame they were holding on. We could use anything else to create this freeze frame, but because we're in Mocha Pro, we're going to use the Remove module. I'm going to come down to the Create button down here to create the clean plate. And then we can go ahead and save that out to a directory so that we can use it in our Insert module. Now, we can't actually use the clean plate clip here because it's only a single frame in a larger clip for the remove module. What we're going to do instead is re-import it via the insert clip up here, or we could use the insert layer back in the host and import it via the host. I'm just going to do it straight inside the interface though, so I'm going to choose that clean plate I just created, click import, and now that's ready to use on frame 185. So we switch over to the insert module, and you can see that our surface is a bit too small. So what we need to do is go over to the Align Surface tool in the layer controls, and make that bigger. So we come over here, up in the corner here, we've got Align Surface, click that, and now our frame is the same size as our footage. So when we scrub through the shot, you can see the tracking data is now moving our tracked frame all the way through the shot. Now, obviously we don't want to use the whole area, so we now need to put the mask in place so we can see our result. So I'm going to choose Use All Foreground Layers in the Insert module, and this is going to cut my insert down to just that masked area. So the problem at the moment though is we can see that it is tracking it in quite well, but the performance of the eyes is gone. So we're going to have to reduce our mask here to see that. I'm going to delete these points up here, and now we can start adjusting these points to fit so that the eyes can be seen, but the mouth is still obscured. So here I've accidentally created another keyframe, so I'm going to go to the end and just delete my initial keyframe, so that's adjusted to the right point. Now we can see that his eyes are blinking and crinkling in the right way, but the smile itself is obscured correctly. So now we just need to work across the shot and fix it up. So I'm going to adjust here where we can see part of the face peeking out from the previous frames, and here you can see I've accidentally created a new keyframe. I didn't want to do that, so I'm going to delete that keyframe and switch to my Uber key. 
This allows me to change the whole shape over time without adding additional keyframes. Be careful to turn that off later though, otherwise it will do that for all your keyframes for the rest of your animation. So now we can just turn off our overlays up here and just see what this is looking like. We can scrub through and that's actually looking pretty good. His eyes are performing and his mouth is holding correct with his head. There is a bit of a subtle problem over here though where you can see the line of his face just adjusting a little bit. So I'm going to grab these points here, come down to my edge width and just set a bit of a feather off that edge so the fall off of the insert blends into the rest of his face. Now before we move on I just want to show you the incorrect way to do this. Here I've drawn the shape just around the mouth area and I'm going to track backwards from the same point as before. As we track this, our shear is going to track the overall motion of the face, but it's also going to track the muscle motion of the mouth and shrink our surface down. Now, this may be perfect for what you need. You may need to actually do something that requires distortion of the surface in this way. But for when you want to hold in a facial position, this may look incorrect for your needs. I'm going to import that clean plate clip that we had before and show you what this looks like with the distortion in place rather than a hold. So we're going to go and just set our in point as before. And I'm going to align that surface to the right point, go over to my insert tool and mask out the area. Now, when we scrub through the timeline, you're going to see a weird stretching going on here. Let's turn off our surface to see this properly. As we stretch through, you can see how his mouth now kind of moves in an alien-like fashion and stretches with his cheeks as they move out. And it looks a little bit weird and unnatural. So this is the reason that we don't do it this way. The reason we want to track the whole face is we want to lock and blend in that mouth motion into the original facial structure, not the movement of the mouth as it appears with its muscular change and distortion. So, back to our original shot, now that we have this, let's just turn off our overlays and play this back to see what it looks like. We've got a nice smooth transition, and if I play it back from the beginning, it now blends into the original footage quite nicely. So now we can go ahead and close and save Mocha, and go back into the After Effects timeline to set up the final render. So back inside After Effects, we now just need to twirl down our module renders, choose Insert Composite from our dropdown, and click render. And now everything from the Mocha interface is being rendered to the After Effects timeline. So that's how you do a basic face replacement in Mocha. There are of course a number of ways this could be approached, but this is a fairly straightforward one. More to the point, if there are types of tutorials you would like to see, more advanced, more basic, more performance modification, or whatever you like, let us know either via the comments or over on our forums at borisfx.com.